Alright, here's that Aurora transistor radio again. I did not did a previous video of it playing with the antenna and ground hooked up. But it can pick up the strongest local station without that. The marriage between Fox Sports Radio, Fox Sports 1, Big Fox, during the NFL season, a lot of big things. Fox Sports Mets Radio. If you want to see it playing in the more detail, watch the other video. I just want to show you guys the... Uh, rest of the kit before I fall asleep here so this is the I guess deluxe three transistor set that Aurora made they also had a two transistor and one transistor kit they were based out of uh, West Hempstead Long Island it's the model uh, 1623 and I believe that is the price there the two transistor set was like 13 bucks, so 17 bucks seems reasonable for a three transistor set with a more complicated circuit. There's not too much left in the box here. You can kind of see where things went. This set came with a bunch of crap packed into the uh, the box. I threw out most of it. Still some junk in here though. I don't even know what some of these things are from. This looks like a part of a slingshot. Old ruler. Oh! I was actually looking for that. Awesome. Uh, unfortunately the plastic piece is still gone, but there's the missing metal piece. You know, I, had, I had shoved a nail in there for the purposes of the video, but that's the um, connector for the antenna there. Alright. Anyway, here's the uh, parts I didn't reuse. I think some of these wires aren't original. They're way too heavy gauge. And some resistors were out of tolerance, so I just used modern ones. I've got Good stock of those. Now you can see, despite this set having never been used, and I don't think they ever put power to it, they didn't finish it, the original owner that is. It's, um, you know, it's cracked open there. These, you know, ceramic style electrolytics are almost always failed. I think that the, you know, um, epoxy or whatever on the ends of these things expands over time and, and cracks the cases, which Let's see the electrolyte dry out. I'll show you what those screws are for in a bit. For some reason there's quite a few extras. And no, I didn't just forget to install them. Let me grab the instructions first. Ugh. The instructions are marginal. I had to figure some stuff out. And there were some mistakes. You can see they're a bit torn. This kit seems to have been aimed at a fairly young age range, so it explains you know, what the parts look like at the very least. It doesn't really go into theory of operation or anything, which would have been a nice thing. Um, no, I guess it explains it a little bit, but not all that much. You can see it's got modular construction. That piece I just found in there is the, the metal piece from the antenna plug, but the two plastic bits are missing. Now, in the unlikely event someone else is building one of these, there are some mistakes on these drawings and in the directions. None of the directions explain the polarity of the crystal diode. I was able to figure that out uh, from the schematic on the back, thankfully. And, uh... This wire, uh, this connection right here is incorrect. You don't want to run the green wire from the tuning cap to that screw. That's the, uh, stator. You want that to go to 12 uh, there and then to 25. So actually, never mind. It's this black wire that's incorrect. That would ground out the uh, tuning cap. You can see only two wires are shown in this uh, other picture. So that's just a little, little mistake. Could have sworn there was something else, but I don't remember. This is where the um, 
The original owner stopped. They were most of the way done. But uh, they had done a crap job. I mean, it was clearly a kid that owned this, so can't really blame them. So, uh, Tom, if you're still around, finally finished this set that you uh, left unfinished all those years ago. And alright, I guess I lied. It does explain on the back uh, the details of of um, you know how the radio works, or at least how radio works in general. This is a regenerative set, so it does does talk about that. I guess I didn't really bother reading the uh, theory section. I was just getting the set working. Maybe I'll look it over later and see uh, how accurate it is. Hopefully it's better than the rest of the directions. Uh, one other weird thing. For some reason, instead of drawing the 9 volt battery like a nine, normal 9 volt battery, they drew it like those 45 volt B batteries, like the the long ones that are like an extended 9 volt battery. There's the other weird thing I noticed on there. Um, so anyway, here's the set itself. It's in very good shape considering uh, its age, but the set was never completed and used, so it just has damage from you know sliding around in the box. Take the screws off. Just two flatheads. The back cover had a hairline crack, which I repaired with super glue, and that worked pretty well. You can see the crack is completely sealed. So, ooh, didn't mean to move that. Oh well. I had the regeneration set up pretty good. Uh, see, there's the three transistors. One, two, three. They're all GE units. This is probably the oldest. It's like a middle production. Silver, but with top hat style. And then there's a um, later PNP one. So that's an NPN RF and PNP AF and another PNP AF. They're all rejects that are not marked from the factory so they have uh, high leakage and low gain but it's enough to make this set work and fairly well considering it's just a you know three reject transistor set to adjust the regeneration you move uh, the smaller coil over the larger one I've got it set up pretty good so that local stations come in you know clearly with no squealing and some distant stuff comes in too. Sorry I'm starting to lose my voice. I'm going to have to wrap this up. No soldering is required uh, for the user at least. It all just screws together. All the soldered uh, connections were done at the factory, although some had to be redone and replace that capacitor there and a fair number of the parts. There's a few original resistors in here, but most of them are, are new ones. I have good stocks of that. And all the electrolytics are new. One of the um, 0.01 micro caps was bad, so I had to replace that. One from my box of parts, or many boxes of parts rather. I used a disc cap. One's off of one 9 volt. They didn't provide any kind of holder, oddly. I just wrapped it up in a paper towel and stuck it in there. The Russians don't say anything about it, so it would have just been bouncing around loose in there, which is not great, considering that's not insulated. You can see it's got a good-sized speaker, though, with a nice output transformer. It plays fairly loud, although it's a uh, you know one transistor, single-ended. That about wraps it up, so thanks for watching.